Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and we have some gunny juice. <laughs> what is gunny juice? Gunny juice is basically some microscopic, very, very fine grain diamond, just grains of diamond mixed in with a liquid, basically. Now, it's a liquid you add to your strop for edge maintenance, edge polishing, and burr removal. There's a lot of reasons why you use your strop and compound on your edge, and we'll get more into that here in just a minute. But first, I just want to say, so far, I really like this stuff. And I do want to thank Blades and Fades for recommending it to me. Shout out to Blades and Fades. This stuff is amazing. It works really good. And I'm very, very impressed with it. One, it's extremely easy to apply. And we're going to talk about the different kinds of leather and what I think is best for this stuff. But very, very easy to apply. You just basically shake the bottle up, you know, take the cap off, put a couple drips on your leather and massage it and, and it dries up very, very fast. You know, I don't think I took longer than a minute to dry up. Now you do want to let it sit maybe about 10 minutes just so the diamonds don't move around when you do strop. You want them to kind of settle in really good, but it does dry up incredibly fast, which I've dealt with a lot of different compounds and a lot of the sprays and liquids, they take forever to dry. You either got to heat them up or let them sit over night, sometimes two days, and you can add too much, too little. It's just, it's a mess sometimes. This stuff is very easy to use, very easy to apply and extremely effective. I got the six micron, the quarter micron, and the one micron. They have a lot more, but these are the ones I have right now. And even though I, I don't have long-term um, you know, knowledge on them. I've, I have a lot of different compounds. I mean, a ton. I've used so many different kinds of compounds. So I'm, you know, I'm used to using compounds and I, I can tell results when I see them, you know, right away. I knew after using these for one day, how much I liked them. So now I've had them longer than that now, but I'm just saying like, I could tell right away, especially compared to all the other compounds I use. Now, how does it work? Basically, it's you're replacing a scratch pattern with a finer scratch pattern. That's one way. If you're going to polish, you're taking your scratch pattern that you have and you're adding a finer scratch pattern and replacing the scratch pattern you once had with a finer scratch pattern. And you continue to keep doing that until you get to a very, very fine scratch pattern, which will basically come out as a polish or until it's polished. Now there's other ways you can use it too. You can use it just for edge maintenance where you're basically taking the microscopic diamonds and using them as an abrasive to make a scratch pattern, the very tip of your apex to give it teeth and bite so that your edge feels nice and sharp sharp and acute. Now you can also use it for burr removal and we'll talk more about that here in a second. And we're also going to talk about how to strop. But first let's talk about the leathers. So I was recommended to use the, the denser leathers. Now what's the difference between the dense leather and the furry leather? The furry leather has a little bit more cushion to it. So you do want to be a little bit more careful holding your angle and the amount of pressure you put because it's very easy to dent this leather with your edge and then the, the leather will roll over your apex and basically do the opposite of what you're trying to do. It will roll your edge instead of making it more acute. Although I've always really liked the furry stuff, especially with other compounds. I've always had really, really good results with the furry compound. But with this stuff, I do recommend using the denser stuff. Now the denser stuff is going to be firmer. You're, and you still don't wanna put pressure and you wanna make sure you're holding your angle right, but it seems that the, the compound stays on the surface a lot easier. And when you're putting it on the furry stuff, it does not absorb very well. Actually, it absorbs too fast. When you drip it on here, it's not very easy to spread. It likes to absorb into the furry soft leather, but the dense leather, it beads up on top and it gives you the ability to, to evenly distribute it across the leather and then it stays on the surface. So it's a lot more effective with the denser leather. So I do recommend the denser stuff. Now this is beaver craft leather. Beaver craft craft leather does sell both kinds there's a lot of different companies and i'm going to link everything in this video down in the description i will also link some furry stuff too just in case if you want to use other compounds 
like like this because I have all that stuff linked down in the description. This stuff's very easy to apply. You just take it out and basically use it like a crayon and you just basically rub it on the leather like this. This is some soft beaver craft leather. But as for the gunny juice, all linked below, including some dense leather. Oh, if you're used to the fluffier leather like I am, then you might like it a little bit better. You know, it just doesn't spread very evenly like the denser stuff. It does absorb a little faster than this, and you can kind of see how it's a little splotchy, although I'm really good at holding my angle and not putting a lot of pressure, so you still get extremely good results with the fluffy stuff. It just doesn't absorb as good, you know, you don't get it as evenly distributed as the dense stuff. I'm going to show you how to strop really quick and also a couple other little techniques. Now, when you're stropping, you're basically, there's different ways you can do it. Some people just yank back, right? But what you want to do is you want to find your angle first. Now, if you're holding too low of an angle where you're laid back like this, the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to polish your the back of your edge bevel or your primary grind, which is this. You will polish that. That's the worst thing that can happen. If you hold too high of an angle, the worst thing that will happen is you will roll your edge, which is worse. So you want to be careful not to lift up too high because you're basically doing the opposite of what you're trying to do. Now, to find your angle, what you can do is if you look under my edge right now, there is a shadow. So what you want to do is if you see there's a shadow right there, you want to lift your edge angle until the shadow goes away and you see the edge reflecting back at you. That's your edge angle, okay? But I like to start at the tip and you can either start at the tip and then work your way up. You never want to go towards the leather because it will cut into the leather. You always want to pull backwards. Now you can do the reverse J where you put the tip, you hold the angle, with the tip and then you're basically pulling down and back at the same time and then as you come around you see how there's a gap underneath the edge where the shadow is now i'm going to drop my elbow until the edge hits the leather and continue moving back and do that all in one swoop now you can also just go straight back a lot of people go like this there's different ways to do it. You can also just start with the tip as long as you're not poking into your leather. You wanna just hold your tip and then you can start with the tip and just push basically straight up at an angle and drop your elbow at the same time so that you get the entire edge. Now, when you're coming back, you just do the opposite. Sometimes it does take a little bit of time to get used to holding your angle, but eventually you do wind up realizing when you're holding your angle and when you're not. And you can also look at the results and kind of see if you're, you know, hitting the top of the edge bevel, you will see it polishing it. If you don't see the, the edge getting hit, you're probably holding it too high. So just kind of watch for what's getting polished and what is not. Now, some people do find good results on finding their angle like this and then pulling back and lifting their elbow to the tip. So you do want to find what works best for you. Everybody is a little different. I find my best results by, by doing the reverse J or just going straight up. Now, with stropping, now, there are a lot of different benefits to it. Now, you can obviously, like we were talking about, you can use it to polish your edge by using a finer and finer micron of polishing compound with a different leather. Now, you do want to put each compound on one part of the leather. You don't want to mix them. So this compound would go on this side, this compound would go on this side, and then this compound would go on this one. You don't want to mix them up. Um, and you want to try to stop as much as you can from contamination between the diamonds and the compounds, at least as much as possible. These are very fine grained. So, you know, if it's a very fine micron, you're probably not going to notice it if it's with another fine, fine micron. But if it's a high micron, you will notice it. You know, if one of your 16 micron diamonds mixes with one of your quarter micron diamonds, you could possibly see scratches in your beautiful polish. But 
when you're stropping in order to use it, like we said, you can use it for polishing, but then you can also use it for burr removal. So burr removal, I recommend knocking most of your burr off from your stone. So when you're coming off your stone, say you've sharpened your edge at, you know, 600 grit and you you're, you have your burr and you're ready to remove it. I, re I recommend removing it with a ceramic or with the stone you're sharpening on first. Then when you only have a little bit left to clean up, use your stropping compound and do about five or 10 passes per side to clean up your edge bevel. Now really quick, I'm gonna show you guys how to do an easy burr removal trick. You can do basically stropping motions on the stone when you're done and you're trying to remove the burr. You can do reverse passes very, very easily. Just do a few couple passes on each side and your edge should be knocked off. Now you can do the same thing on a ceramic rod. Very, very lightly, no pressure at all. You're just trying to snag the burr off before you strop. Here, the goal here is to reveal a very clean, fine apex with teeth at the apex. You want the teeth, basically that's the bite. That's the, the, the bite you feel on the edge. Now, overstropping is a thing. We're gonna talk about that here in one second. Now, the next thing you can do is, or use this for, is edge maintenance. You've used your knife all day at work, you come home, and it's not as sharp as it was when you left for work. So, you take your strop and you do a few passes on each side just to clean the edge up and put some more microscopic teeth at the apex. The apex is the very tip of the edge. So you're basically just reapplying more teeth to it. Now, and then, you know, we talked about polishing it. Polishing it, now you do not want to over strop or over polish. Now, over polishing really isn't a thing, but over stropping is. And that's usually, a, it's usually the, the bad effects come from not holding your angle perfectly. And then what winds up happening is even though your edge is very beautiful and nice and mirror polished and everything looks gorgeous, you are lifting too high sometimes, and you're not holding your angle perfectly. And what you're doing is you're rolling. Like, like, see, watch what I do here. I'm lifting. Just, you probably can't see that. I'm going like this. Now that is going to make my edge not sharp. It's going to dull my edge. Now, another thing is you can go so fine with your polishing compound that the teeth that you want at your apex are too fine and now they're slick. And now what you want is a lot of bite at your edge where it's like, whoo, that is sharp. And now you're to where it's glassy. You know, you basically rub your fingers up and down the edge and it doesn't feel sharp. Even though your apex is good and it's nice and clean, it's, there's no teeth there. There's no bite, you know, because we're looking for micro serrations at the very tip of the apex. So now if you look at this drawing, this would simulate an edge. This would be the edge bevel, the side of the edge bevel, and then that's the tip of the apex. Then you see the little lines right there? That's the microscopic teeth you want for bite. And then these little tiny lines, that's the edge finish. That's the little scratch pattern that winds up turning into a polish, you know, or that would be a polish or even a toothy edge. There would just be more scratches if it's a toothy edge. Over stropping basically means you've stropped all those teeth away and now it's just a straight line with no little tiny micro serrations. So you want to be careful not to over polish or over strop your apex to the point to where there's no bite. Now, different edge angles can create a little bit more bite and, um, you know, the, the higher the edge angle, maybe the tougher it is, the lower the edge angle, the more finer it is. Now, you... You know, that's all, you know, there's a lot of variables here, but just considering the compounds, you want to be careful not to overstrop, which can lead to a slick edge. 
Now, I will say I do like this stuff quite a bit. For the little bit of time I've had it, it works very, very well. Easy to apply, very easy to use, and it has very good results, fast results. And it's, in my opinion, better than most of the compounds I've tried, for sure. I do really highly recommend this stuff. Like I said, though, I recommend it on a dense leather. I think that will give you the best results and it'll be the easiest to apply. The other thing, be careful not to over strop. Be careful not to lift your angle too high. You want to hold your angle just right because you want the abrasives to scratch the very tip of the apex, but you don't want the apex to roll flat across the leather because that will lead to dulling your edge and it will do the opposite of what you're trying to do. I will link everything down in the description for you guys. I, man, I, I recommend it. Now, like I said, I got the six, the one and the quarter. If you're wanting a perfect mirror polish, you, you might want to get a couple more. These are not cheap. Leather is not cheap. You can use other things though. You can use balsa wood. You can use paint sticks if you want. There are ways to get by on a budget by doing this. Now, you can, if you're starting with a high grit edge, 1200 grit, you can probably get by with the, um, you know, maybe one micron higher than the six, then use the six the one and the quarter. You know, if you're coming off of say uh, 1500 grit stone, you might be able to get by with the six one and the quarter. I've had some pretty good results. They're not quite perfect mirror, but it's very close to it. But you know, it, it, it the, the, the certain steels polish easier than others. So it, it is gonna depend on the steel. You are gonna have to play around with it a little bit. But as of right now, I'm very happy with my six, one and quarter. If you're only gonna use it for edge maintenance, all you need is the six. The six will get you good results from fresh off of your stone, What the, the, regardless of what grit you're coming off of. You know, if you're coming off of 600 grit, this will work great. If you're coming off of 2000 grit, this will work great. If you start getting upwards to 5000 grit, well, then this is going to be right around that area. So, you know, six micron is, you know, close to about that grit. So I think six micron is a really good one for edge maintenance, burr removal and things like that. Now, if you're wanting a very coarse edge, you might want something a little more aggressive than six micron, but you know, that just kind of depends, but I think it'll do really good from 600 and up. But there you guys go. I love you guys. Like I said, I will link everything I can down in the description. Peace.